السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر سعید علی مردان نبی ویلکم ٹو مائی چینل ان دس لیکچر وی ول لرن سم بیسک اباؤٹ پولر کوارڈینیٹس اینڈ پولر انٹیگرل اینڈ دین وی ول لرن ہاؤ وی کین سالو کوسچن نمبر 15 اف ایکسرسائز 15.4 فرام تھامس کیلکولس 12th ایڈیشن بک مور اوور وی ول آلسو لرن ہاؤ وی کین ٹرانسفارم اے کارٹیزین انٹیگرل انٹو اے پولر انٹیگرل سو فرسٹ اف آل وٹ از اے پولر کوارڈینیٹ سسٹم اے پولر کوارڈینیٹ از اے سسٹم وچ از یوزڈ ٹو کریٹ اے پوائنٹ ان ٹو ڈائمنشنل پلین اے پوائنٹ ان پولر کوارڈینیٹ از ریپرزنٹڈ بائی ار ان تھیٹا where r is the distance of the point from the origin and theta is the angle measured in counterclockwise direction with positive x axis here if p is this point in two dimensional plane then r is its distance from the origin and theta is the angle of this point with positive x axis in counterclockwise direction next these are the transformation equation in order to convert cartesian coordinate system into polar coordinate system x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta And for the reverse process, we have r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared and theta is equal to inverse of y over x. Next, it is a general representation of a polar coordinate system and a polar integral. Double integral over the region r f of r of theta dA is equal to f of r of theta r dr d theta. Now, please note that in Cartesian system, we were used to of using dA is equal to dx dy or dy dx. But in polar coordinate system, we will use dA as r dr d theta. That is why I have replaced dA with r dr d theta. f of r of theta is a function of r and theta. Since r is our inner variable, so limits of r may be constant, may be variable. So that's why I have written r is equal to g1 of theta and r is equal to g of g2 of theta. And theta here is our outer variable so limits of theta are always in the form of constant real number and here we will calculate the limit of theta as counterclockwise angle measured with positive x axis in radian measure in the next step we will learn how we can calculate the limits of r in order to calculate limits of r we will pass an arrow to our region like this the boundary through which this arrow enters will gives you the lower limit and the boundary through which this arrow exit will give you the upper limit. Similarly, in order to calculate limits of theta, we will calculate the starting and ending angle of our region with positive x-axis in counterclockwise direction. Please note that this region starts from this point here and ends at here. So we will calculate its angle, starting angle and ending angle in counterclockwise direction. I have taken the starting angle as alpha and ending angle as beta. So the limits of theta are from alpha to beta. Next, we will learn how we can transform this integral into a polar integral. In order to convert this integral into a polar integral, we have to sketch the region of integration. The region of integration is sketched with the help of limiting values of the variable. Here, the value of y is 1. Please note that the value of y is 1 and the value of y is x in the inner limits and the value of x is 1 and value of x is square root of 3 in the outer limits. Now, y is equal to 1 is equation of horizontal line. y is equal to x is equation of line passes through the points where we have the same value 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. x equal to 1 is equation of vertical line and x is equal to square root of 3 which is approximately equal to 1.73 is also equation of a vertical line. Now, with the help of these boundaries, we will sketch the region of integration. Since x axis and y axis, since x axis and y axis is not involved in our boundaries, so I will make them dotted like this. Next, marking the x axis and y axis and origin and the points 1, square root of 3, and 1 along x axis and y axis because I have to draw the boundaries through these points. Now, this red line is actually a vertical line for x equal to 1. This blue line is for x is equal to square root of 3. This horizontal line is for y equal to 1. And this black line is for y is equal to x. Next, please note that this triangular region is a common boundary region of the four boundaries. So this is our required region of integration, this triangular region. So in the next step, we will highlight it. Also, please note that the corner points of this triangular regions are 
square root of 3, 1, 1, 1, and square root of 3, square root of 3. This point has the value square root of 3, 1, because here the value of x is square root of 3 and the value of y is 1. This point has the coordinate 1, 1, as here the value of x is 1 and the value of y is 1. This point has the coordinate square root of 3, square root of 3, because here the value of x is square root of 3, and it is the intersection of the line where the value of y and x are same. So the second value is also square root of 3. Next, highlighting the region of integration. And in order to calculate the limit of the power, we will pass an arrow through this region. This arrow enters through this boundary, green boundary, whose equation is y equal to 1, and exit through the boundary x equal to 3, this blue line. So in order to calculate limits of r, we will polarize the limits. We will polarize these boundaries, y equal to 1, putting x, y is equal to r sine theta equal to 1, and then calculating the value of r, we have r is equal to 1 over sine theta, and 1 over sine theta is cosecant theta. So the lower limit of r is cosecant theta. To calculate the upper limit of r, we will polarize the boundary x is equal to square root of 3. Now, substituting x is equal to r cos theta, we have r cos theta is equal to square root of 3. Calculating the value of r, we have r is equal to square root of 3 into secant theta. So this is our lower limit and this is our upper limit. Next, in order to calculate the limits of theta, please note that in counterclockwise direction, our region starts from this point, square root of 3, 1. So what is the angle at this point? In order to calculate the lower limit of theta, we will use this point in this formula. We have substituted the value of y from this ordered pair, 1, and the value of x, square root of 3. So we have theta is equal to tan inverse of 1 over square root of 3, which is equal to pi by 6. You can calculate it from your calculator very easily. Next, for the upper limit of theta, please note that your region ends at this boundary in counterclockwise direction, whose equation is x equal to y. Using this equation in this formula, substituting y is equal to x, we have theta is equal to tan inverse of x over x, which is equal to theta is equal to tan inverse of 1, which is pi by 4. So the, so the limits of theta are pi by 6 to pi by 4. In the next step, we will convert this integral into polar integral. For this purpose, we will replace dy dx with r dr d theta. And we have already calculated the limits of r for secant theta through square root of 3 secant theta. And limits of theta are pi by 6 to pi by 4. Now the integration of r is r squared by 2 for the given limits. In the next step, applying the limits, upper limit minus lower limit. In upper limit, we have replaced r with square root of 3 secant theta whole square. And for the lower limit, we have replaced r with cosecant theta. So we have cosecant squared theta. Next, please note that these are the formulas for the integration of secant square and cosecant square. In the next step, Making the simplification, square root of 3 whole squared is 3. 3 by 2 is constant. We can take it outside. And we can apply the integral on secant theta. And this square makes it secant squared theta minus 1 by 2. Remain as it is. And we can apply integral on cosecant squared theta, d theta. Next, applying this formula here, we have 3 by 2, 10 theta, limit from pi by 6 to pi by 4, minus 1 by 2 minus cot theta limit from pi by 6 to pi by 4. In the next step, here, we'll have a look on the first one. I have written the step again, so that you can have the same screen. Applying the limits, upper limit, upper limit minus lower limit here, tan pi by 4 minus tan pi by 6, minus minus plus, plus 1 by 2, upper limit minus lower limit. <coughs> now, you can calculate from your calculator, 10 pi by 4 is 1, and 10 pi by 6 is 1 by square root of 3, plus 1 by 2. 10 pi by 4 is, cot pi by 4 is 1, and cot pi by 6 is square root of 3. Actually, cot pi by 6 is the reciprocal of cot pi by, uh, 10 pi by 6. <coughs> so after this, making the simplifications, we can multiply 3 by 2 here, and we can multiply 1 by 2 here. Taking the LCN, we have 3 minus square root of 3 plus 1 minus square root of 3. 3 plus 1 become 4. And minus square root of 3 minus square root of 3 become 
minus 2 square root of 3. Dividing each term with 2, we have 4 by 2 equal to 2 and 2 over 2 equal to 1, 1 into square root of 3. That is our answer. I hope you understand this question. Please like, subscribe and share this content with your fellows. Allah Hafiz.